If there is no unbalanced force, an object does not change velocity, that is, accelerate or decelerate. So a car, for example, will move at a constant speed if the engine force and friction force are equal. As I mentioned in another video, unbalanced forces can cause objects to change in velocity, so to accelerate and decelerate. Whether it is acceleration or deceleration depends on the direction and size of the unbalanced force. Now let's see the equation that links force, mass and acceleration. F equals ma. Force equals mass into acceleration. Before we move into another example, the units of force is newtons, mass is kilograms and acceleration is meters per second square. So if an object has a mass of 10 kilograms and an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared, then the force that has to be applied would be 10 into 2, which is 20 newtons. The grooved pattern on the car's tire is known as the tread of the tire. What the tread does is it makes sure the road is always in contact with the tire by throwing away water and other substances preventing contact. So I'm sure you know by now that brakes work by increasing friction between the tire and the road. So most modern vehicles are fixed with anti-lock braking systems to ensure that chances of skidding are low. Next we'll look at safe stopping distance. The stopping distance of a vehicle is the total of the thinking and braking distance. The faster the car, the greater the stopping distance. The thinking distance is the time it takes for you to react. If you are driving and you suddenly see a man blocking your path, the distance it takes for you to react to this is called the thinking distance. Many factors affect the thinking distance, including the person driving, the visibility and the speed. Next the braking distance. So this is the time it takes for you to press the brake and for the car to stop. Vehicles with a larger mass take longer to stop due to the F equals MA equation mentioned before. And finally, weight is the force that acts on an object because of gravity. This weight depends on the mass and the gravitational force. Noted by the equation W equals mg, weight equals mass into gravitational force. This is the solar system. There are 8 planets travelling in elliptical orbits. Earth is one of them. For these planets and comets to travel around the sun, there must be some sort of force being applied because there are no strings or wires. In 1687, Isaac Newton put forward his theory of gravity, stating, There is always a force of attraction between two objects caused by the masses of the object. He called this the gravitational force and suggested that the size of the gravitational force depends on the masses of the object and the distance between them. The greater the mass, the stronger the attraction force. The greater the distance between the masses, the weaker the force. Our sun is huge, so the gravitational force between the sun and the planets is also huge. It's what holds our solar system together and makes the planets follow their curved paths. Planets that are closer to the sun have more curved paths due to the larger attraction forces. The gravitational field strength is the strength of gravity on a planet or moon. There are two factors that affect the gravitational field strength, the mass and the radius. Larger the mass or radii, larger the gravitational field strength. The Earth's gravitational field strength is 10 Newton per kilogram. Satellites are objects that orbit a planet. There are two types of satellites. Natural satellites, also known as moons. Earth has one moon that takes about 28 days to go around the Earth. Many planets have moons. Mars has two moons, while Jupiter has more than 60. Moons have circular orbits due to the gravitational forces from the planet. Artificial satellites are the man-made ones that humans launch into orbit around the Earth. We use these satellites for communication and to monitor tiny details of the Earth and many more. Comets are large rock-like pieces of ice that orbits the sun. They have elliptical orbits, so at times they are far away from the sun and at the other times they are very close to the sun. 
orbital speeds of planets and satellites can be calculated using the speed equation. For distance moved, you must take the circumference of the orbit, so 2 pi r, and for the time period, it is the time taken to complete one orbit. So orbital speed is 2 pi r over time period. Electric current is a flow of charge. These charges are carried by negatively charged particles called electrons. Electrons can flow through metals easily, which is why metals are called conductors of electricity. Plastics are poor conductors of electricity because electrons do not pass through them easily. Poor conductors of electricity are called insulators. In metals, electrons can move freely between atoms. Normally, this movement is random, which means electrons flowing in one direction are roughly equal to the electrons flowing in the other direction. This would mean that there is no overall flow of charge. If a cell or battery is connected, more electrons will flow away from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal. This is called the net flow of charge, which is electric current. Current in a circuit is measured using an ammeter. An ammeter is connected in series in a circuit. Electric current size indicates the rate of the flow of charge. Electric charge is measured in coulombs. 1 coulomb is equal to the charge of 6 into 10 to the power 18 electrons or 6 million 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 electrons. As I mentioned before, cells and batteries are used to create electric current. They transfer energy to the charges. The amount of energy given to each coulomb is measured in watts. So as the charges flow, the energy is transferred by the components that they pass through. Voltage is measured using a voltmeter, which should be connected in parallel to the component that you are measuring the voltage of. There are many types of circuits. One type of circuit is where there are no branches or junctions, so there is only one path for current to flow. It is called a series circuit. In a series circuit, one switch placed anywhere can turn all components on and off. If any one component breaks, the circuit will not work since there is a gap and the cell's energy is shared between all components. The electromagnetic spectrum is a continuous spectrum of waves. So in the electromagnetic spectrum, on the far left is the radio waves. Radio waves have the lowest frequency and the largest wavelength. Next is microwaves and infrared rays, which have a consequently short wavelength and have a high frequency. Next is the visible light and then ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. Gamma rays have the highest frequency and the shortest wavelength. So all the waves in the electromagnetic spectrum transfer energy, are transverse waves, all travel at the speed of light, 3 million meters per second, and all can be reflected and refracted. Another tip to remember the order of the waves is the mnemonic. Graham's xylophone uses very interesting musical rhymes. Now let's look at the uses of the waves in the electromagnetic spectrum. So radio waves are used for broadcasting and communications. Microwaves are used in mobile phones and cooking. Infrared is used in some TV remote controls, night vision and infrared cookers. Visible light is what allows us to see stuff and is also used in communication and photography. Ultraviolet can be used in fluorescent tubes and UV tanning lamps. X-rays are used obviously in X-rays to monitor and observe the internal structure of objects. Gamma rays can be used to sterilize food and for medical equipment. Some of the waves in the electromagnetic spectrum could be detrimental if exposed too much to it. Microwaves could heat up body tissues, which is why microwave ovens have a metal screen to reflect the wave. Overexposure to irradiation could cause skin burns. Exposures to ultraviolet radiation could lead to skin cancer and blindness. And gamma rays, although they can be used to cure cancer, can also cause cancer when used in the wrong way or could cause cells to mutate. Luminous objects are objects that emit their own light, such as the sun, stars, fires and light bulbs. When the light emitted enters our eyes, we can see the object. 
The way we see non-luminous objects that do not emit light is because the light that they reflect enters our eyes. When a light ray strikes a flat surface like so, it is reflected so that the angle of incidence, which is the angle between the incident ray and the normal line, is equal to the angle of reflection, which is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal line. Light rays can travel through different media like air, water and glass. When light rays cross the border between two mediums, it changes speed, which causes a change in the light rays direction. This change of direction is called refraction. When a ray travels from the air into water, it slows down and moves towards the normal. And when the ray travels from water, it speeds up and moves away from the normal. Refractive index is the amount that different materials can bend rays of light. Glass index is about 1.5. Water's index is roughly 1.3. This means that glass would bend the light ray more than water. Refractive index can be calculated using the equation sin i over sin r, where i is the angle of incidence and r is the angle of reflection. When a light ray is refracted, there is a small amount that is reflected as well. But as the angle of incidence increases, the angle of refraction also increases until it reaches the critical angle. When the critical angle is reached, the angle of refraction would be 90 degrees. When the angle of incidence is larger than the critical angle, all the light is reflected. None is refracted. We call this total internal reflection. Sounds are caused by vibrating objects. When these vibrations reach our ears as sound waves, we can hear sounds. Sound waves, just like all other waves, can be reflected. Just like light waves, when sound waves are reflected, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. The reflection of sound waves are used by ships to discover the depth of the water beneath them. Sound waves can be refracted as well. You can't see this, but you can hear it. For example, when you stand at the edge of a lake, you can very clearly hear the sounds due to refraction. Work done is the force applied multiplied by the distance moved. Force is measured in newtons and distance is measured in meters and the work done is measured in joules. Work done is equal to the energy transferred. Gravitational potential energy is found in objects that are raised to a height. GPE can be found using the equation GPE equals mass into gravitational field strength into height. GPE is measured in joules, mass in kilograms, field strength in newtons per kilogram, and height in meters. When an object falls, it reduces the GPE because the height is decreasing. Kinetic energy is found in moving objects. You can calculate the kinetic energy using the equation Ke equals half mv squared, half into mass into velocity squared. Mass is measured in kilograms and velocity in meters per second squared. When an object falls from height, its gravitational potential energy is transferred into kinetic energy. When the object is held at a high place, the, it is all GPE and no kinetic energy. But when it is dropped, the kinetic energy increases as the gravitational potential energy decreases. And right before the object hits the ground, all GPE has been transferred into kinetic energy. Power is the rate of transfer of energy. Power is measured in watts. You can calculate the power using the equation power equals work done over time taken. But the work is measured in joules and time in seconds. Ionizing radiation occurs when unstable nuclei decay. It causes atoms to gain or lose electric charge, forming ions. Unstable atoms decay randomly, so it's not possible to tell when the decay would happen. There are four main types of ionizing radiation. Alpha radiation. Alpha are fast-moving particles. They are the same as the helium nuclear with a mass number of 4 and would have a charge of plus 2 because of the two protons. Some features of alpha radiation. They have a short range. Commonly travel a few meters in air, 
cannot penetrate few millimeters of paper and are highly ionizing. Beta radiation. Beta particles are fast moving electrons ejected by a decaying nucleus. This occurs when a neutron splits into a proton and electron. The proton remains in the nucleus while the electron is ejected. A few features they have. They have a medium ionizing power, medium penetrating power, can penetrate paper but not tin aluminium. Gamma radiation are electromagnetic waves with short wavelengths. A few features, weak ionizing power, strong penetrating power, can penetrate aluminium but is stopped by thick lead. Neutron radiation is when neutrons are emitted by the radioactive material. The neutron particle has the same mass as protons but has no charge since it is neutral. Nuclear reactions involve a change in quantities of atoms. The two main types of nuclear reactions are fission and fusion. Fission is the splitting of heavy atoms into light atoms and fusion is when light atoms are forced to join and form heavy atoms. In both processes, some of the mass from the reactants are converted into energy. The sun carries out fusion reactions where hydrogen is converted into helium. Uranium is a fissile material. This means it goes through the splitting process of fission easily. How this happens is, a slow moving neutron is absorbed by the nucleus of a uranium-235 isotope, which becomes unstable and splits apart. So due to this fission process, two daughter nuclei are produced, barium-144 and krypton-89. This reaction also produces gamma radiation and three other neutrons. The mass of the products are less than the reactants. The missing mass is converted into the kinetic energy. If one neutron from the fission reaction causes another uranium-235 to split, then the fission reaction will keep going. This is called a chain reaction. For this to happen, there must be a minimum amount of uranium-30. We call the minimum amount critical mass. So atom bombs use this technology by forcing two fissile materials with masses lower than the critical mass under high pressure, which forms a greater mass than the critical mass, resulting in a huge chain reaction. An example of the fusion process would be when hydrogen and deuterium and tritium collide at high speed to form a helium nucleus, a neutron, and large amounts of energy. This fusion process is the energy source for our sun and stars.